I want to thank you all for coming out today, taking some time and learning about crime prevention and home security. So first of all, I would like to talk about what Neighborhood Watch is and what it isn't. Because oftentimes people confuse Neighborhood Watch with other community programs, like Block Parent, for example, all right? Now, Block Parent is a great organization. It's where you have one family who decides to make a difference in their community by putting a sign in their window and making their home a safe place for people in distress to come to, right? That's great. Neighborhood Watch is taking that same concept and multiplying it by the size of the community. So for example, in a, ho a community like this where you have 100 homes and you know probably 300 people living here, you take your block parent concept and you multiply that and now you have a community that's looking out for each other, okay? But unlike block parent where you're making a house where people can come into, what you're doing is you're making a neighborhood where people look out for each other, okay? Where they get to know their neighbors. And by getting to know their neighbors, they get to know what's normal in the community so they can easily identify what's not normal. For example, a police car driving through your neighborhood at three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon would not necessarily know that that white van belongs in your neighbor's driveway, but you would, right? Because you as the person who's gotten to know your neighbors would know that they don't have a white van. And furthermore, that they're away on holidays maybe and now when you see that you're going to have your spidey sense tingling right and you're going to say that doesn't look right to me and what are you going to do with that information so you see the difference between a neighborhood watch and other community uh, areas is that you are actually the kind of neighbors who care about each other and who are looking out for each other so when that spidey sense is tingling when it doesn't seem right what you're going to do is you're going to lift up the phone and call the police. And that's where neighborhood watches are different. You are actually acting on that instinct and you're calling in that suspicious vehicle or that suspicious person going door to door, ringing doorbells. And, you know, maybe they don't have a very credible story. Like, you know, they're uh, ringing your doorbell or knocking on your door and you answer the door and uh, they're asking for someone that you know doesn't live anywhere near around or asking for directions or where's the nearest Tim Hortons or something. You know what I mean? It doesn't really seem credible. That should set your alarm bells off and you would then be watching where they go. If they go up to the next house, the next house and knocking on the door, you can be pretty certain that what they're doing is casing the area to find a house that is empty, okay? And what they want to do is they want to find those empty homes because today, in this day and age, most break and enters do not happen in the evening. They happen in the broad daylight, all right? They kick in the front door, they're in and out in two minutes or less. And we're talking today about some things that you can do to make your home and neighborhood safer. So having a neighborhood watch is the first way to make your neighborhood safer because people are actually looking out for each other, calling the police if something suspicious is going on and letting the police do what they do best. Now, what Neighborhood Watch isn't? It isn't a vigilante network, okay? It's not citizens on patrol where y'all take turns, you know, patrolling the streets with the baseball bat. Sorry guys, if you thought that's what you were signing up for, I had to let you down. We do not encourage that kind of thing. We don't want you to uh, confront criminals because even though they may be young or even though you know you think that uh, your outrage is so great if you see someone breaking into cars and you confront them you could end up putting yourself into a very ticklish situation often these guys are on drugs they're carrying firearms or other weapons and we do not want community members to get hurt and so what neighborhood watches is being the eyes and ears of the police service okay and making that phone call and then letting the police do the responding. So that's the safest way. We don't want you in any way to get hurt, but we do need to know what's going on in your community. Do you know we think we only ever hear about perhaps one third of the crime that goes on in a community? A lot of people become victims of crime and they don't call it in. Why do you think that might be? Any ideas? Why people might be a victim of crime and not call it in? Because they're afraid, that's a really good point. 
They might be afraid that if they call in, you know, those kids partying over here in the park and breaking beer bottles, that, you know, a police car will pull up in their driveway and then they'll go and deal with it and then they'll come and uh, kick out their taillights or something, right? That's a really common concern. But do you know you can call things in and not actually have the car pull up in your driveway. You just ask the communicator, I'm giving you some information about what's going on here, it's going on, but don't have the cruiser pull up in my driveway, okay? So you don't have to identify yourself. You're com you, you can communicate anonymously to the police service. We still want you to make that phone call, but we don't want you to uh, fear retribution. Now, when you're on the phone with the communicator and you're standing up in your bedroom window there, don't have the light on behind you, okay? You're on the phone at nighttime. Obviously, that's not a good plan. But you do want to make sure that you stay on the phone long enough to give the communicator all the information that they need, all right? One of the sheets that I handed out to you that I'd like to refer to is a chart that says what to do if you see crime. You got three columns. One is when to call 911. One is when to call the administration number and what that number is. And one is when to call Crime Stoppers, okay? So I wanna just explain a little bit about those three processes. Because uh, when to call 911, it's really important to know. A lot of people are afraid to use 911 because they think, you know, what if it's not considered truly emergency? If, it can, if you think it's something where we need to have the police here fast, call 911. If you think you see someone going around checking out houses or maybe they're going around behind your neighbor's house or whatever, you call 911. That's a suspicious person. We want to know about that. We want to get here fast and deal with it, okay? If somebody is hurt or you hear glass breaking, could be someone smashing in, you know, a door or whatever, or kicking in, you'll only hear that once. They'll only make one noise to get into a house. So if you hear something or you see your neighbor's house and the front door is ajar or whatever, Call 911, let us come and deal with that, okay? If it's something where the crime has already taken place, for example, you get up in the morning and you find that your car has been entered, right? And you realize, oh, I forgot to lock it. And they took a pair of sunglasses and some loose change, that kind of thing. Now, a lot of people would not report that, okay? And you know, we want to change people's thinking. Even if you think it's just a minor crime that you have become a victim of, we need you to call that in, and I'll tell you why. Everything in every organization is driven by what? Stats, right? That's how you get more staffing, that's how you get more you know, resources, that's how we know where to put the resources. So if lots of crime is going on in an area, but people aren't reporting it because they think it's too minor to bother the police with, then you are going to find that the criminals are going to be operating and you're not going to see many police officers because we're going to be thinking everything's okay. Or you want to see police, what you need to do is make sure that you're calling in if you become a victim of even minor vandalism. We need to have an accurate idea of what's going on in an area so that when we uh, use our resources and, and we deploy them in different areas of town, we're going to be able to put them you know, where they're needed the most at the time of day they're needed the most. And we have a whole team of crime analysts whose job it is, is to take all of those statistics. Every single time you call in, it goes into a database and that's all analyzed by our crime analysts. But their job is to identify patterns and trends and map that for the officers. So when they go out and they do their patrols, they're going to know whether to turn their wheels left or right, okay? So they're gonna know what's going on. So that's the very first thing, is being a part of this partnership where you call in if you become a victim of crime or if you see suspicious or criminal behavior, all right? Now, if you're calling from your cell phone, it is very, very important for you to identify where you are. Because if you call 911 from your house phone, you know, let's say you were choking and you couldn't communicate, so you called 911. We would get that as an unknown trouble call and we would send all the emergency services to your house because we know where you are. And then even if the communication was interrupted, we would be able to still find you. Now, when you're calling on the cell phone, it's a different story, isn't it? You could be anywhere. So more important than anything, for the very first words that come out of your mouth, if you call 911 from your cell phone, should be, I'm standing at the corner of Taunton and Grandview or whatever, right? That's the start. And then what you're seeing and so forth. 
Now, when you talk to the communicator, oftentimes people find the communicators come across as kind of brusque on the telephone. They're asking you a series of rapid fire questions, but that's their job. Their job is to get drill down to the facts, get the important stuff out so that they can find out the priority of the call. All right. So if they come across as being a bit brusque, think of them like the triage nurse at the hospital. When you go to the hospital emergency department, they don't take people in the order that they walk in the door, right? They find out how urgent it is each person. And that's what the triage nurse does. Our communicators are highly trained professionals. They have one of the most difficult jobs in the police service. And what they're doing is they are drilling down in that phone call by asking very precise questions. So your way of partnering with them is to give them uh, exactly the information that they're looking for and be as detailed as possible. So instead of just saying a green minivan, if you can get a license plate or even a part of a license plate, you know, a green minivan and three of the letters were one, two, three and it maybe had uh, bike racks or ski racks or one tail light was off or that's a kind of detail that helps the officers identify which green minivan you're talking about okay so the more information you can give clothing descriptions direction of travel think of it like you were writing a newspaper article right what do you have to do who what why where all those kinds of things that's the kind of information that our communicators need when they are on the phone with you and stay on the phone as long as they need you to guide the officers to the residence. Let's say, for example, you were looking out your back window. Now, if you live in one of these homes over here, you back onto somebody else, right? Maybe you're looking out your back window and you see someone breaking into that house behind you. Now, if you're on the phone 911 to tell the officers to come to that uh, house on that street, you probably would be able to tell them the street that they're supposed to go to. But would you know the house number? No, many of us don't. That's why on the other sheet I gave you is a little picture of houses with you in the middle. Uh, what I would like you to do as part of your homework assignment is to get to know your neighbors on both sides, across the road and behind you. The house number, their name, their telephone number. By being a neighborhood watch, what you're doing is getting to know people, right? And did anybody ever think of this idea? You all have your, ho your house numbers on the front of your house. What about putting it on the back of your house? If you back onto someone else, what you're helping to do is if someone looks out their back window, sees someone breaking into your house, and they're on the phone to 911, they can quickly see your house number. And then we can direct the cars to the right address immediately. Okay? So Neighborhood Watch is all about partnerships. It's all about doing what you can do to make your home safer and also to pay make your neighbors safer. And at the same time, uh, you build a stronger and more connected community.